Hi, I'm Colin, and I'm here to present Dynamic Neural Relational Inference for Forecasting Trajectories. We are interested in modeling the movement of entities, such as body joints or athletes in an arena. Their motion is influenced by the unseen interactions, or relations, they have with each other. Knowing how different entities interact with each other can improve the ability to predict their future states. Furthermore, it is reasonable to expect the types of interactions to change over time. We introduce Dynamic Neural Relational Inference, or DNRI, which explicitly models the interactions between different entities. Relations are modeled as discrete latent variables, which are inferred from the data and, unlike prior work, change over time. Here is an overview of how DNRI works. Given an input trajectory, we want to predict a distribution over relation types at every time step. During training, this is done using an encoder which utilizes information from both the past and the future of the sequence to estimate the relation distribution. After predicting these distributions, they are used by the decoder to reconstruct the input trajectory, except shifted forward one point in time. So that we can use the model during inference to predict the future of a sequence, we additionally train a sequential prior distribution over relation types, which is solely a function of the past. We train DNRI using the evidence lower bound, which takes the following form. The first term is a reconstruction loss and is used to train the decoder to make correct predictions for the future time steps. The second term is a KL divergence between the encoder and the prior. This pushes the encoder, which sees both the past and the future of a sequence, to match the prior, which only sees the past of a sequence. The prior distribution factorizes in an autoregressive manner and is produced in the following way. At every time step, the input features for all entities are passed through a fully connected graph neural network. This results in a feature representation for all directed pairs of variables, represented by the edges of the graph. These embeddings are passed through a forward LSTM in order to accumulate information about the history of the sequence. Finally, at every point in time, the hint state of the LSTM is passed through a multilayer perceptron, producing the logits of the prior distribution. As mentioned previously, the encoder considers both the past and the future of the sequence to produce relation distributions. More specifically, it uses the same feature representation for all pairs of variables that were computed by the prior model. It then passes these through a backward LSTM to accumulate information about the future of the sequence. The hidden states of the backward LSTM are then concatenated with the hidden states of the forward LSTM produced by the prior model and are passed through a multilayer perceptron to produce the logits of the encoder distribution. Next, we must sample relation variables. To ensure end-to-end -end trainability of the model, we want to differentiate through the sampling process. Since sampling from a categorical distribution is not differentiable, we instead sample from the concrete distribution, which is a continuous approximation to the discrete categorical distribution. Given distribution logits h, this process proceeds by first sampling a vector g from the standard Gumbel distribution and then computing the following update, where tau is a temperature parameter. During training, the logits are taken from the encoder distribution. During inference, the logits are taken from the prior distribution. The decoder processes the input features at a given point in time by passing them through a graph neural network. For this model, there is one set of edge functions for every relation type, and the function used for every pair of variables is determined by the relation variables that were sampled in the previous step. The hidden state for each entity is then passed through a linear layer to produce a distribution over its states for the next time step conditioned on the past. The final decoder distribution is autoregressive and consists of the product of these individual distributions. To recap, given a set of input trajectories, DNRI first passes them through the encoder and the prior to produce distributions over the relations between each pair of entities at every point in time. Relation variables are sampled from the appropriate distribution which are then used by the decoder to select the appropriate graph neural network parameters for each pair of entities, which are then used to predict their future states. Our model is an extension of neural relational inference by Kip et al. from ICML 2018, hereafter referred to as static neural relational inference. This model produces one set of relation variables, which are then used at every point in time by the decoder. DNRI, on the other hand, produces a separate distribution over variables at every point in time, which allows for increased modeling flexibility when relations between variables are expected to change over time. Additionally, static NRI uses a fixed uniform prior over relation types, while DNRI uses a sequential prior which is learned from the data.
I will now present experimental results, which cover several data domains. For each set of experiments, we compare DNRI against the following baselines. We train a static NRI model and evaluate two ways. The first approach predicts relations using the provided input and uses these for every step of forecasting. The second approach reevaluates the relation predictions using the most recent trajectory predictions during every step of forecasting. Additionally, we train an LSTM which predicts the trajectory of each entity independently, an LSTM which predicts all trajectories jointly, and a graph neural network model that is equivalent to the DNRI decoder except it uses one set of parameters and a fully connected graph. We first ran experiments on a synthetic physics simulation dataset we created with the purpose of analyzing DNRI's ability to recover ground truth dynamic relations. Each trajectory in the dataset consists of three particles. The first two, in red, move with some constant velocity. The third, in blue, is initialized with a constant velocity, but is additionally pushed by the other particles whenever their distance is smaller than a threshold. We trained a static NRI model and a DNRI model on this data. Static NRI, which cannot properly model the dynamic relations, has an average relation prediction F1 of 27.1, while DNRI has an average relation F1 of 54.3. The second data set consists of motion capture recordings taken from the CMU motion capture database. We use two different subjects. The first contains trials where the subject is walking. The second consists of trials where the subject stands stationary for a different amount of time and then jumps forward. Here are the results and a sample visualization for the walking subject. The DNRI model is able to predict many frames into the future without straying too far from the ground truth skeleton. In contrast, the static NRI model makes significant errors. We visualize some relations predicted by DNRI, which shows that, relative to the heel of the skeleton, different relation types are active when picking it up, moving it forward, and putting it back down. Here is a comparison between DNRI and static NRI for a walking subject. Here are results and visualizations for the jumping subject. Once again, DNRI's predictions more closely match the ground truth skeleton compared to the static approach. The visualized relations for DNRI indicate that different relations are used when the subject is preparing to jump than when the subject is in the middle of the jump. Static NRI is unable to properly model different phases of motion like this. Next, we study basketball player trajectory data. Each trajectory consists of the 2D positions and velocities of the offensive team, consisting of five players. These are processed into 49 frames, representing approximately 8 seconds of play. When computing metrics, 30 frames are provided to the model, and the remaining 19 are predicted. For visualization purposes, we feed 40 steps to the models and forecast the remaining 9 steps. We show the prediction errors and a sample trajectory. The static model mispredicts the general path of the red and blue players, while DNRI is able to capture the correct movement direction. Visualizations of predicted relations by both models are shown on this slide. We can see that DNRI initially predicts an interaction between the orange player and both the blue and red players which is highlighted in pink. This interaction is not needed by the model later. Static NRI, however, does not predict this relation, which may explain why its performance is suboptimal in this case. Finally, we study the IND traffic dataset, which consists of recorded vehicle, bicycle, and pedestrian trajectories at traffic intersections. Unlike the other datasets studied in this work, the number of entities varies over time as they enter and leave the intersection. Consequently, the RNN models and static NRI, which assume a constant amount of entities at all points in time, cannot be used. For evaluation, we divide recordings into 50-step sequences. Whenever an entity appears in the sequence, its position is provided as ground truth for five steps, and the model is required to forecast its location for the rest of the sequence. DNRI, which can model multiple types of interactions between different entities, outperforms the FC graph baseline here. Thanks for watching this presentation. Code implementing these models is available at the provided link.